Hello, I am Ezra Haynes. And I am Greg Burgess. And we are from Allegiant. Or Allegayon. Or Agamemnon. Or Alligator. Alleggy Blonde. The new singles you guys put out. Who did the, uh, the cover artwork for those? Travis Smith. I mean, just his reputation speaks for himself, you know, just like going all the way back to like Sound of Perseverance from Death, you know, all the Opa stuff. He's just one of those highly respected, you know, cornerstones of metal artwork. And uh, so it's just, you know, it's he's one of those guys he's just kind of honored to work with. Apoptosis was the first time. And then we did, uh, when we did Concerto, he did that. And then Roundabout, he did that. And then, yeah, so Damn Them, he did that as well. And then the two new singles, Inhumation and Iridescent. Need to, we tried to have that like gold snake, the like the glue between the two. Yeah. And then we actually shot, it was really funny, we shot a video for Inhumation and we had a snake in the video. <laughs> and the snake was so cute. Yeah. It was, I've never said that about a snake, but yeah. the snake was literally adorable. And we're like, this is not gonna work. <laughs> we, we needed a monster. It was just too, too, too adorable. Yeah. yeah. The Damnum cover is cool. I was wondering whether like what you, do you just let him do his thing for Damnum? Yeah, well, so the original concept that we had was we wanted to have kind of like have his take on the character from our first album, Fragments of Form and Function, and kind of put him in this new environment surrounded by just like like Easter egg type things. And um, that, that kind of just got morphed over time until it became what it is. For me, it looks like a throwback cover, yeah, a little bit like an early 2000s type of like take. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah cool. We've had some humorous videos in the past and it was kind of, uh, we just wanted to touch on that a little bit. Um, not that it's like everything, but we're definitely a bunch of idiots, so it's gonna, it's gonna happen. <laughs> Um, eventually, but with that in particular, uh, you know, I can't recall who came up with the idea originally. Do you? I don't know. It was supposed to be a hot dog eating contest. I yeah. mean, we couldn't come up with the budget. Yeah, <laughs> we, we really couldn't figure it out. And it was kind of a last minute throw together. And uh, I mean, the only real standout thing is like when I first heard that, I was like, uh, oh yeah, he was not ooh, into it. Like, we really? Like, <laughs> oh, I'm just not into it. I was just being the pessimist, being an asshole kind of. And, um, yeah. It so really grew on me, dude. It's <laughs> such a dumb video, and it's like, I mean, like, it speaks for itself, man. It's just fucking hot dogs, bro. Like, what are we doing? There, there's no deep meaning at all. There's just five idiots going, what if? <laughs> it's like a lot of our funny videos. It was like, just like, just getting together and just talking. And on the fly. I mean, like, Threshold of Perception was literally, like, it cost us, I think the budget was literally uh, Taco Bell for the evening or the day. Like, it was 30 bucks, that was the budget. We had shit cameras, like, the, the worst cameras. And uh, I really leaned hard on just, like, dumb color correction in Final Cut to just, like, make it something. It's like polishing, you know, a turd, as they say. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny how much like feedback I still get to this day about those videos, but yeah. I don't know. They're always like last minute, like, oh, well, we should do this. And a lot of the like, a lot of the gags are like, while we're doing it, we're like, oh, what if? Yeah. You know, we're just, we're just, it's like five guys getting together and having just a laugh, yeah. and then it comes and you have a stupid thing. But this time we had a really nice camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stupid. I, Don't give yeah. us a nice camera, man. I think it was like a, one of those red cameras. Yeah, it was like eight. Like 8K or something like that. You can't even watch it on YouTube yeah. or something like that. It's, uh, yeah, it's in 8K on YouTube. It'll look great in 10 years. Yeah, future proofing, baby. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I just know it's for us, it's like every time that we tried to be serious, it just didn't, I don't know. Now, it's not that we, we weren't serious, because we are serious about the music and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or the, the topic was serious, you know, we would do that, but it just always seemed like. More you know, natural. Yeah, more. it's just more authentic for mm -hmm. us to just be goofballs. And you know? uh, Boo Boo, bass player, he actually brings this up a lot, is like metalheads are really in tune with uh, just how a band kind of 
uh, puts themselves out there, whether they're like really here for it or not, or if it's authentic or not. And uh, it seems like with our track record, like those videos that have been more based on the, the hilarious side of things have been, I would say a little bit more successful. They've done better for us. Because, I mean, the funny thing is there, but it's also, I think, because it's more authentic. Totally. Yeah. Well, and the music is serious enough in a way. Like, you clearly take the music seriously. Yeah. It's no joke what yeah. you're playing. Like. And that speaks for itself in a sense. So it's exactly. like you catch their eyes before they, you know, catch their ears. And, so and even the people that, that don't like it, you know what I mean? At least they're saying they don't like it. Yeah. You know, yeah. They could have not watched it and just turned it off. So yeah. sure. we're not haters. You, yeah. you don't like whatever. It, it's fine. Cool. There's so it's literally five there. dudes dressed as hot dogs. Like <laughs> we won't be crushed if you don't <laughs> like it. <laughs> Has anyone shown up at a show in a hot dog? Not yet. Not we, yet. We have a banana so far and that's about it. Yeah. 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 Do you guys feel like some of the adversity and the shit you've been through has made you guys stronger today? I don't know about that, but if you love what you do, you keep doing it, you know? Um, it's it's crazy, I mean, because we've had a lot of lineup changes, and I always think of it as like, the old, like, the legacy bands didn't really have that much, right? But there was money, <laughs> right? There's no money now, so you, you just have to like, love it, and then the marriage with, you know, in, you know, five dudes or whatever, and it just has to work, you know? and. Uh, so sometimes it doesn't, and uh, right now we're healthy. Yeah. It's nice, it's like super cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I would say that it's like over time, with all these changes and such, there's such a like a, a refinement that comes into play. Um, something that I've noticed a lot is routine. So like these tours are getting easier. I mean, they're all, you know, it's, it's a tough life, but um, you start building your routines, you know, you show up to the venues, you do your thing, or whether it's in the studio, you, you come with like, more education than you had before um and, and being removed and, and back in the in the mix myself i find it very very cool because i learn a lot especially from this guy there's clearly a lot of influences musically um what did you guys grow grow up like what did you grow up listening to maybe your parents or whoever were listening to and what brought you into heavy heavy music you know i'm i'll be 45 this year so like i was I was kind of like coming up in like when grunge was kind of emerging, right? Which is like for me as a guitar player and as an adolescent, those two things did not mix very well. Now as an adult, I'm like, ah, it's good. You know, it's good music. It's just, it's just vocally driven. It's not guitar, but, but like, yeah, I was a little asshole and I was completely not into. So for me, I had to like kind of look backwards right so it was a lot of the big four stuff and like kind of the early tampa stuff you know th to the day it was like still like grunge kind of killed metal which that's debatable uh, maybe bands just sucked at a certain point you know then europe started carrying it so then by the time i got to college like in flames and you know this this the gothenburg thing happened so i was kind of mixing like the big four and prog rock and then into the melodic death metal thing happened. So like that's a huge part of maybe like the earlier part of Allegiant was the prog rock, thrash, and, and Gothenburg sound put together. Um, but Michael is gonna be, like he changes to this day. Like, yeah, that guy has the most eclectic like. Yeah, like, so I, I can't even keep up. Like when he first joined, he was death and cynic. And now, now like, when he drives at night, he listens to whale noises. So, yeah, literally. So a lot of the more like ambient, newer sounds is a lot of Michael. So he he does a lot of even like um, he does a lot of the sound treatment mm -hmm. um, now. Like Michael's kind of an unsung hero. He doesn't get nearly enough credit. So it's like even when s someone's not the primary songwriter, Michael will come along and really kind of like put a lot of synths in the background, so everything flows together really nicely. A lot of depth. Yeah. Uh, my music taste, uh, it's an interesting one. So like the first two albums I really got was Appetite for Destruction and uh, Ace of Base The Sign. And so that, that kind of speaks true to this day, really. <laughs> so like that would be like my metal side, right? But I still very much listen to a lot of pop or like sad girl music. Um, it's got Lana Del Rey. Yeah, I have Lana Del Rey <laughs> tattooed on my neck. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I adore her. It was really that, and then it, it went into a, a punk phase. I, I started listening to, I think around that time was Offspring Smash album. 
Um, and then we delved a little harder into it, which was like the Vandals and like those bands. And then in 1994, I was in Reno, Nevada and Korn came out with their first album, right? And that's what introduced me to what is known as the heavy metal meter, right? And so I start with Korn, I hated it. <laughs> I was like, this is garbage. And I moved to California, which they're definitely a California band, more, more prominent out that way. And uh, they came out with their second album. And that's when I started like really kind of getting into the heavier shit. And um, at that point, then it was kind of like that, that, you know, the corn and then Slipknot and then Lamb of God, Chimera. And then like really diving into this group, these guys are the ones, him and uh, one of the original founders, uh, Ryan Glisson, uh, got me more into like the mellow death and like really ex I got that exposure like to Nevermore it. and Arch Enemy yeah. and stuff like that and uh, at that point um, I think maybe I was listening to like a lot of like Planetary Duality when that came out The Faceless that's such a great record yeah I mean I, I listen to metal I, I, I probably listen to a little bit more hip hop and pop these days I'm very hook driven and I try to incorporate that into our writing a lot that's why I mean, especially with the new album. Yeah, and I definitely think that uh, even though it's not metal centric, it plays such a huge role in the music, even from day one, back from the early albums, being so hook forward, mm -hmm. like having, even though there's not like melody mm -hmm. so much in the in the vocals, but the just the the rhythm, the cadence, hook and the cadences really kind of make the catchiness of it. And that was always such a huge important part mm -hmm. of. Uh, kind of like what made us stick with yeah. like the music on our side and then the, the hooky vocals. 100%, and as time progressed, it's like we leaned even more into it. So like this next record will be very hooky. It's probably, the, I, in my opinion, the most hooky album we've done. Yeah. It's Which like, is great, it's, it's heavy as fuck, but it's very hooky. Yeah, it's my favorite album we've done since Proponent. Yeah. So we were very excited about it, it's yeah. gonna be great. It feels more complete uh, coming back into this after my absence, which was about seven years. That time frame gave me a lot of time to kind of, you know, grow as a person and such. And coming back into this with new eyes and uh, slightly humbled, I would say that it's just kind of, uh, I don't know, the best way to describe it is like every day I wake up and it's literally a dream. You know, my, my personality, my attitude has changed a lot over the last decade and kind of bringing forth this new energy uh, back into this environment has been incredible, man. Like I wake up every morning with smiles. Like uh, there's, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain, but I'm just uh, living in a dream, man. Cloud9, really, 